welcome. I'm Maria with the Key Biscayne Chamber of Commerce, and today we're on location with Adair Osback. Bush. Did I say that correctly? That's right. (laughs) Good, good. Better known as Dr. A. Um, Dr. A has been away for a few years, right? Yes, I've been um, actually away from Key Biscayne for about 10 years. I had a veterinary clinic here for many years, and then I moved to Gainesville to get married. And then my husband and I subsequently got on our sailboat and went around the world. And after going all the way around the world, there was no else to co- nowhere else to come back to but Key Biscayne, so I'm back. Well, that's saying a lot, you know, <laughs> to want to come back here. It is. Uh, any special reason? What, what is it that you like it's, about Key Biscayne? It's really the sense of community. I um, got very tired in our travels not knowing the person who was doing the groceries or delivering your newspaper or running the restaurant. And it's just so wonderful to be able to bump into people I know, yeah. just every now time you, I go to the grocery store. Yeah, you've wonderful. started, um, you, you've, you've gotten back in I to have. the business of being a veterinarian, and you have a little twist on this. I do. I did a house call um, practice before I opened my practice here on the Key, and I just felt that I loved it so much because it's instead of having the animals come to you, in your clinic and they're all worried or nervous and not at home, I can go and sit on the couch and have them like this and get to know them so they're not afraid. And to see them in their home, this is especially Mm -hmm. true with cats because as anyone knows who has a cat and who's brought it to the veterinarian. That's not a fun experience. It's not their (laughs) most fabulous thing to do. So this way I can, if they're having behavioral problems, I can just watch them. If they are having problems with limping, I can actually see that, and I can see the interaction mm-hmm. um, between the owners and um, and the pets. So it makes a much more, you know, very nice and casual event. And uh, when I used to have my practice here on the key, I would schedule appointments every half an hour, 15 minutes, whatever we were going. Mm-hmm. And now here on the key, I do them pretty much once an hour, just because I like to see where things where things lead. Exactly. We have uh, two special guests with us today. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yes, them? Yes. This is Chico. Chico. Hi. This is Chico and Manchi. Chico is a Bichon Frise, and Manchi is a Terrier Maltese cross, and they are owned by Toby and Bill Rohr, who are two of my very dear friends, and. They just have two of the most wonderful dogs I know. They have <laughs> so. been, they're very friendly. They really are. They're very friendly. Yes, yes. A dog like this, though, even more so maybe than a dog like this, needs mm-hmm. a lot of maintenance. A lot of maintenance. Can we the... talk a little bit about that? Sure. Tell me uh, what you think should be done. Sure. One of the most important things is to establish um, a relationship with your veterinarian before your animal gets sick. That way, we already have a relationship. They're not afraid. They don't necessarily associate me with bad things happening. Um, and it's important to also, um, as early as possible, to start getting them used to other animals, getting them socialized. Yes, animals, um, especially down here in the south, need constant uh, maintenance. We have um, a great um, population of mosquitoes that carry heartworms and ticks that carry uh, Rocky Mountain and Lyme mm-hmm. disease, as well as um, the other parasites mm-hmm. that we have. So it's important as you are beginning the vaccination protocol with your puppy uh, to get them started almost immediately on the heartworm and the flea uh, prevention and the parasites. Mm-hmm. That way you don't have to worry about them uh, being ill as you're trying to train them mm-hmm. to be house trained and to socialize. And then, fortunately, we have been able to um, decrease the number of vaccinations that dogs now get. We used to have them in sometimes twice a year, but always once Mm -hmm. um, to get vaccinations. And we now know that um, we can vaccinate dogs um, as, as they become adults so that they only have to be boosters every three years. So that's makes oh, that's it a very- Oh, that's good, yeah, because I remember with mine, we used to right. every right. year. Right, right. But it's uh-huh. especially important, though, that people then don't forget to have their animals looked at once mm-hmm. a year, because that's when we can start to see early problems, like dental problems, or skin problems, or pick up early kidney mm-hmm. or um, liver problems. So it's very, very important to mm-hmm. keep that one year um, exam and and part of the dental and stuff is all part of the maintenance for the dog. It is. How it often is. do you recommend that owners bathe their dogs or? Well, it depends. A, a dog like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, like Chico, um, who is pre leads a pretty um, um, luxury luxury life. life. Yes, he, <laughs> he goes to the groomer uh, every few weeks. But you get your, you know, your outside dog, the Labrador Retrievers uh -huh. or the um, Golden Retrievers, and um, you know they're in the water, mm -hmm. uh, the beagles, and so they they sometimes need to be bathed mm -hmm. more. But I don't like using a strong flea shampoo. I like instead using the the topicals to keep rid of the fleas, mm -hmm. and then just use a mild shampoo to, you know, to keep them yeah. clean. Yeah. And, and then it's okay to blow dry them and everything. It is. I mean, so long as you don't burn their. Oh yeah. Skin but usually they just are happy running around the uh -huh. yard and and, and good yeah time. and shaking. Right. And then what about their ears? When you bathe them and stuff, should you clean right. their ears and how? Usually yes. Usually I recommend putting a little bit of um, cotton in both of the ears, mm -hmm. and um, to also put a little bit of ointment in the eyes, so you don't have to worry about getting the soap in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And then after you uh, bathe them, it's very good to at least once a week to make a 50-50 mixture of um, white vinegar mm -hmm. and water and just to pour a little bit in their ears and then to just massage it around. Care like that can prevent a lot of ear problems from happening mm -hmm. and that's a very um, And do you recommend that, that owners brush the dog's teeth and everything? It's a wonderful with, thing and that's one of uh -huh. the first things that we like to get involved with when people get a puppy because Things like brushing teeth or clipping their nails, things like that. If you don't begin it mm -hmm. as they're a very, very young puppy, it's very, very difficult to ever do it yeah. as, as they get older. So you just start working, you know, working with them from the time they're just babies, just opening their mouth. They ought to be able to let you open their mouth and look inside it. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to let you hold their paws mm -hmm. and examine their nails. And if you start that with treats mm -hmm. and then just gradually make it just praise mm -hmm. and, and then they really get they get to look forward to it. it's part of their yeah, fun yeah, time with you fun exactly yeah, part of the bonding time that's right that's right so with keeping things um under control and and seeing the veterinarian on a um, mm -hmm. you know permanent basis mm -hmm. on a not permanent but on a scheduled basis right then a lot many many things can be avoided mm -hmm. And from there on, you know, we go through when it's really fun to have them, when it's really puppies and they're just learning all these mm. things. And we work with the behavior problems and the feeding. And then they get up to middle age and they, you know, have some of their own issues. And then we follow them all the way through to when they become geriatric animals, hopefully mm -hmm. many, many years later. And then right through to being able to say goodbye to them at home. Um, instead and that's of such a wonderful thing to be able to is. do. I mean, that's a hard thing anyway. And for it to be able to take place at home is yeah. really, you know. Yeah, it's a real gift for the dog it and is. for the people. And for the they, family. Can, they can hold on to each other exactly. and, and say goodbye. Exactly. So. Um, well, all of these travels that you had, all the time that you've been practicing, any memorable events oh, or... Well, many. I was fortunate enough to, um, before I went to veterinary school, to work uh, with Dr. Hubble here on the Key when we had the Key Biscayne Zoo. And then at veterinary school at the University of Florida, I also did an externship at the National Zoo, which was wonderful. I started off doing exotics and snakes and reptiles, Ooh. but then I finally, <laughs> <laughs> I did birds for a while, but then I finally settled on um, dogs and cats. When we were traveling, uh, it was amazing for both of us to realize that our best times traveling had to do with animals. Really? Some of the most special times were, you know, seeing the whales and the dolphins and going to an orangutan um, rescue camp in um, Borneo and living with the elephants for a week, learning how mm. to be mahat, mahouts. Oh. So it was just great. It was going and, and being with little lion cubs. Uh, uh -huh. It was just... And I heard a story that there is a manatee named after you, correct? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of my teachers um, at University of Florida um, started working for SeaWorld and he was down here uh, rescuing some manatees that had been captured here because they were injured. And he called me up and he said, Adair, I just wanted to let you know that we just captured a cow and her calf and I've named her Adair. <laughs> so I got to go to the sea aquarium and, and visit her and her her calf. I think that's pretty neat. It was good. I yes. think that's pretty neat. <laughs> yes. What's the most rewarding thing about oh, your job? Gosh, whenever people ask me that, I just feel like, you know, I can't think of a downside. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, you know, how's this for a, I know. how's this for yeah. profession? And the people are already so wonderful with their pets too, because many people, you know, pets represent a real part of their family. 
And so they are very happy to do anything possible, and they want to know that you love the pet, exactly. and that the pet loves you. And I just think that it's just a wonderful, and also being able to use science and my abilities and to just be in a, in a profession that's constantly growing mm -hmm. and changing. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dr. A, thank you for being with us thank today. You, thank you, you very know, much. It's, this has been great getting to know about our furry friends. And of course, we won't forget our kitties. Oh, you no. know, we oh, can't no. forget our kitties either. Mm -hmm. But we thank you, and we hope everybody will call Dr. A thank if you. you need somebody or want somebody to come out to your home. She's the person that will do it. And uh, can you give us your phone number? Yes, the phone number is 305 763 2785. You can like us on Facebook or find us on our webpage at kbveterinaryhousecalls.com. Thank you, Adair. Looking forward Thank to you. seeing your pets in your home. <laughs>